Inside the bag are two marbles, one black, one white. You're each gonna draw a marble. If they match, you stay alive. If they don't, you're out. It's do or die. As critical of Survivor as I am, even I have to admit that in 99% of cases, the challenges are well produced and look fantastic on the show. But then we have a certain few challenges that are so inexpensive they look like a kindergarten project. Wordplay is at the heart of What Do You Make Of This, a word scramble challenge that featured in episode 11 of the Pearl Islands. Now the producers in this season were quite frankly genius in making many of the challenges pirate themed, such as marching a pirate cannon through debris or firing projectiles to make a mast go on fire. Even the reward challenge in this episode featured the now iconic dead grandma lie and the loved ones had to walk the plank. So you can only imagine the disappointment when this was the following challenge. Contestants were given letters to make Survivor Pearl Islands and had to rearrange them to create a variety of 7 to 11 letter words. The rules of this challenge were rather confusing and caused Krista, Tuana and Fairplay to be eliminated. Burton then called Jeff and was given immunity because every answer was considered good. Until evidently someone from production saw one of the words were misspelt, creating impromptu Jeff Probes dialogue that sounds AI generated. Yo, survivors, come back! It turns out Burton misspelled liaison, and because the challenge was so budget, the contestants could look at each other's boards when exiting the site, meaning production had to do another word scramble match again. In the reunion show, Jeff takes the time to talk to the girl in her early teens that designed the challenge and essentially throws her under the bus. In fact, he has no remorse and tells everyone it was by far the cheapest challenge the production team had to produce. But as you'll soon realise, some more modern Survivor seasons have clearly outdone her. This challenge was only seen twice after the Pearl Islands and All-Stars and Palau, but they were redesigned to have extra elements and it would be disappointing to see this challenge return in Modern Survivor. On the topic of disappointing, we'll be transitioning into Australian Survivor 2017, but for viewers that don't wish to be spoiled, here's a timestamp for the next Survivor US Challenge on this list. I already said this challenge would disappoint you, but for context, Australian Survivor 2017 featured impressive and diverse challenges, especially considering it was only the second modern day season. There were cool visuals, epic hero portions, and pits that people could shove Ziggy into. In episode 20, Australian Survivor revealed the biggest reward the show had seen at that point, with the KFC feast. Considering the sponsorship money Australian Survivor got for this big brand deal, you would think this reward challenge would be wild. Instead, it was about wild life. In perhaps one of the biggest challenge downgrades ever, these contestants had to act out animals while one captain matched the corresponding animal block. I'll give production credit, it was pretty funny watching big alpha males like Luke and Loki having to pretend to be jellyfish. We can't convince me this game of animal charades shouldn't be played by anyone over the age of 10. Even when the challenge is announced, Pete's face says it all. If this challenge also wasn't budget enough before, the contestants sitting out couldn't even watch, and the host JLP couldn't properly commentate what was happening in fear of giving away the answer. As you may imagine, with a list about the most budget challenges in Survivor history, we're going to the first ever season in Survivor Borneo. Now before you complain, yes, I know Borneo is the first Survivor season, so we should be more lenient, but what a lot of people forget is that the challenges in Borneo were actually pretty creative. They utilised a pretty fun shipwrecked and plane crash combination that the contestants were survivors of. We had them getting rescued in life vests while out at sea, dangling from their parachutes in trees, and they had to search abandoned planes. So you can only imagine my heartache when the final six challenge had the contestants literally standing on planks of wood while Jeff was being drowned. While it could be argued this inspired the endurance challenge concept in Survivor, it really isn't riveting TV watching contestants just standing there on wood for an hour. If the challenge wasn't budget enough, the mechanic to increase difficulty was in the form of Jeff wading through shoulder high water and cutting the ropes with a pocket knife. Yes. That being said, there have been other endurance challenges to have existed, like the ones that get contestants just to stand there. However, these challenges at least have temptations to make the dynamics more interesting and makes the challenge overall look less basic. So considering Jeff himself had to risk getting hypothermia to continue the difficulty levels of the challenge, I feel this is all but fair to include. 
and number two will now be getting into a challenge, so budget Jeff didn't even appear. Now this style of challenge has happened a few times, but perhaps the first one is the most fitting for this video. Samoa was the first time a challenge without Jeff occurred and the contestants didn't know what to do. Some expected a swap, Others were just waiting for Jeff to arrive, but it was Dave Ball in his infinite wisdom who had different thoughts. He and Shambo sprint out to the chest and chickens, only to realise it was a reward challenge. Hilariously, we have Dave plus Mick patiently reading out the instructions, while Shambo is a few yards away, completely strangling chickens. This challenge turned out to be the budget version of Boche Ball, where contestants had to get their coloured balls the closest to the flag. While it was a fairly competitive event, you can't convince me this is anything other than six adults throwing balls wrapped in rope at a stick for a few minutes without even the main host of the show being present. Even Russell had to set up the competition by choosing where to put the flag. There are no set pieces and instead the contestants are trusted to keep to the rules in this incredibly basic challenge. Now this challenge and a few others of the same kind were used as a way to allow Jeff more free time so he could experiment with other things like his own show. But not having Jeff in a survivor challenge feels weirdly wrong. And if you thought that was marbles, at number one we have season 35 with what can only be best described as an astrology lesson. The only way to guarantee that you get quality time with your loved ones is if you are really in sync with them. Hi Jeff, I know I'm probably not your favorite Survivor YouTuber, but I have just one question, just one question, a very tiny question, what on earth are you talking about? Jeff can speak as fantastically as he wants, but at the end of the day, it is a group of two individuals pulling colored marbles out of a bag. Now supposedly the initial family challenge fell through, causing this to be a last minute addition. Okay, but even in that instance, are you telling me they don't have portable challenges as backups like Rollerball or the Buoy Endurance Challenge? This is the best you could do. Hi IRL Bandit here, I have just been outside and grabbed a bag and thus, by going into my garden and getting one of the things in my house, I have recreated the final nine challenge of a multi-dollar company in 15 seconds. Considering it's a loved one's challenge, it's rather disappointing. Seeing these emotional contestants have to pick the correct marble out of the bag to be with their loved one. As one of my commenters note, that marble challenge was so stupid. Based off random luck to earn your loved one. Pathetic. Make them earn it. No matter what way you look at it, this challenge is literally just a roulette that lasts for several minutes until one lucky individual is declared the winner of the challenge, if you can even call him that. On screen now is a video where I go through five Survivor contestants that ruined vote split plans, a video you should definitely watch. Subscribe as we approach 3k subs, enjoy your weekend, and peace!